Today we're going to try to answer the question, what is efficient computation? So we deal with algorithms all the time and we want to make our computers run as fast as possible. How can we do that as efficiently as possible? So you may think, okay, well, if we have some running time, which is n or, let me put a comma here, n log n, and we see Oh, n, for example, like in find, like if we want to find something in an unsorted array, maybe, n log n shows up in sorting algorithms. So those are typically efficient. Um, n squared, we may see that in not as good sorting algorithms, or maybe finding the pair of closest points. So pair of closest points. You can actually do it faster than that, but it's, uh, it's the naive way of doing it. Um, and cube sometimes shows up, and that appears in matrix multiplication, which is ungodly important <laughs> in uh, computer science. And we may want to uh, carry on with this. Uh, we sometimes have exponential runtimes, which is something that we'll see eventually. So these show up in SAT solving. And in some sense, there's not really a faster algorithm than that. And we can, of course, carry on. We can have, uh, we can have uh, doubly exponential runtimes and whatnot. So the question is, what is efficient? And it used to be that we used to draw a line in the sand to say, OK, if your runtime is less than or equal to some polynomial, then what we call that is efficient. So this is, used to be the definition, although it's less true now than it used to be. So there was a big movement in the seven, 1970s to classify algorithms that run in a polynomial amount of time as efficient. So like all of these ones down here would be efficient and the exponential runtimes are not efficient. But as data becomes more, more vast, we may want to move this line to the left a little bit. And actually one example of this is if you submit any algorithm that runs an n squared or more time to a compiler like GCC to help compile programs, it will be immediately rejected. So you, you may want to say, okay, well, if I have an n squared algorithm, then that's not efficient really anymore. And there's whole notions about, well, we want to stay down in this camp and not just any polynomial. In fact, a bubble sort, which is commonly taught to be a slow algorithm, is n squared, but by this definition is efficient. So it's not really a concrete answer here. It just really depends on what the problem you're dealing with is. Sometimes the best you can do in a sentence, we'll see that, is over here. Sometimes you can make it down here, and we obviously want to vie for the low end of this picture. But the whole idea is to get them as low as possible. So we're going to stick with this definition because that's just how this is normally taught because um, a lot of interesting problems are not known to be in this set at all. And we know them to be over here, but we don't know if they're in here. So we're just going to stick with polynomial being efficient. So we're going to define two things, which are P and NP. And before I actually put them here, I should stress that NP does not mean not polynomial. Well, it's, it's actually a good idea, but it's not actually correct. Okay, so what the P stands for is a deterministic polynomial time, and NP means non-deterministic, but also poly time. So that's the intuitive definition, but I'm going to give the formal one, which is it's going to be the union of time. Remember, we defined time before, which is how long a Turing machine runs on a certain input size, of the form n to the k, where k is at least zero. So it's the union over all k of n to the k. And so that's a polynomial. You pick any 
a constant number, you stick it upstairs, and that's a polynomial. And NP is very similar. So we have the union over k at least 0 of non-deterministic time uh, n to the k. So it's exactly the same, except now you have non-determinism instead of just determinism. And one thing we can note immediately is that p is a subset of np because each of the time n to the k's is a subset of the non-deterministic one. So the non-deterministic machine doesn't have to make choices. It doesn't have to. So, uh, but if we allow choices, we could theoretically go faster uh, with a non-deterministic machine versus a deterministic one. And so that P is a subset of NP. And the literally million dollar question is, is P equal to NP? And throughout a lot of these upcoming videos, we're going to try to explore some of the reasoning by behind why people are interested in this question. Mainly, um, NP corresponds to checking a solution versus P, which is actually computing a solution. So it's, it's really asking, like, is checking a solution as fast as verifying, uh, as finding the solution? If I can check a solution quickly, can I find it efficiently? And we'll be looking at some of the reasons why we think that, although we can't prove, that they're different, um, but, they're, but it very well could be the same. And there's actually an analog that we'll see much later that they are actually the same, but it's with space, uh, the amount of space used versus how much time is used. And so may, there's a question of like, how does space actually relate to time and a whole bunch of interesting questions. So that's what P is. P is deterministic polynomial. Non-deterministic is non-deterministic polynomial, NP. And uh, depending on your definition of, of what efficient computation should mean, this seems reasonable or it might not seem reasonable. So there are whole notions of uh, if we define P in a sense as uh, N times log N or log to some power N, and ignore all the other polynomials. And there's a whole uh, computational complexity perspective in that realm, but we're just gonna stick with this because this is the one that's commonly taught and most people are familiar with. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about P versus NP in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There are many other links in the video description if you wanna support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.